Telford International Centre for the biggest worldwide Team Fortress 2 event. Insomnia 49 is the 49th installment of Multiplay's Insomnia LAN events. The Summer I series LANs have seen many of the best teams that European TF2 has to offer. For I-49, the TF2 community raised over $20,000 to send the two best non-European teams to compete, High Rollers Gaming from North America and Team Immunity from Australia. Both of these teams have proven themselves to be the best in their respective regions. They are eager to see how they'll compete against the rest of the world in a LAN setting where lag and ping won't interfere. I think winning I-49 would just be a huge boost to everybody. I mean, one, the money would be nice. It would kind of like make back what we've spent on getting here. But I think even more than that, it's just about kind of proving ourselves. Like, Australia and TF2, even us, like even though we've been winning for four years, like if you ask any American player and probably any European player, how many Australians do you know and who's the best players, all of them will just say, oh, Sheep and Yuki. I think if we won, it would be really nice to kind of stick it to the, the two biggest scenes and say like, look, you guys have got to learn something. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see what happens, but I think definitely winning would be a really big boost for Australian TF2. Yeah, of course the prize, but it's not the goal. The goal is like a revenge. I just I want to prove that Epsilon could be the best team in the world. If we manage to take games off them and take off the or take the championship off them, then it'll prove that um, America really is the best nation, as was proven from my 46. I think winning this for uh, Europe would be really great because they've all really wanted this and that you know it's a bit, it was a bit sad at i46 so yeah i mean it would it would take a while to just like yeah we did this for you if we won but uh it would mean a lot it would just be massive because it's like you think about it, it's kind of like a cinderella story because you know we're you know from the start we've pretty much always been the underdogs people were always like oh hrg best team in the world or ipsy best team in the world and for wins for us it's just going to be Roller coaster of emotions the whole way, that's for sure, and it'll just be amazing for us, definitely. Winning this is what we were, we made the team for, um, so it, it literally means everything. Like, the prizes don't mean half as much as winning this for both ourselves and for Europe, um, so it's, it's incredibly important to us. I think it would do the community justice for sending us here. Uh, that's what they want. They want to see us win. They paid the money to get us here, so we gotta we have to try and deliver. Um, for me, it'd be nice to go out on a win. It would be a nice. Uh, it'd have sentimental value and a little monetary value as well. I wouldn't mind the nice little chunk of change that we get as well. Um, but I just want to be up on that grand stage again. I want to play. That's. I felt like I played my most clutch up there in front of everybody. So I want to get up there again. One week before I-49, Team Immunity make the long journey from Australia to England. They plan to spend the week boot camping and recovering from jet lag. Back home, Team Immunity have won the previous eight seasons of the Oz Fortress Winter League Premier Division, cementing their place as the best team in Australia. Their legacy of dominance is one that no other team in any region has matched. However, they have yet to face a professional team from outside of Oceania. I-49 will be their first test against Europe and North America. All right, so my name's Brad, or Aporia. I play in Team Immunity. We've been together for four years. So the team we're kind of taking to land, or the team we're here with at the moment, is me and Yuki on Soldier. I play Roma, he plays Pocket. We've got Bulk on Demoman and Sheep and Antoine on Scouts with Mike or Bonobo Mediking. We've been playing together as immunity for three years. We started off as Clan A a year before that, so we've been playing together for four years, but we've had players come and go. So I mean like the core of us, so that's me, Sheep, Yuki and Bonobo have pretty much been together from the start. So that's like, you know, four years now, pretty much. We feel most comfortable playing with this team and it's the team that we think will kind of take us to victory or we're gonna try to anyway, so. 
the day before we flew out, so we flew out on Friday. On Thursday, Mike and Antoine flew in and they flew in at 9 a.m. So I drove up to Sydney and picked them up. I live about like an hour out of Sydney. I live in Wollongong. Uh, I picked them up, took them back down to Wollongong. We kind of chilled out there for the day. And then at 5 a.m., we got up the next day, drove up to Sydney, got on a 10 a.m. flight. So this is where it gets super fun. So that was a, a 10 a.m. flight. We were there for nine hours into Vietnam, nine hours in Vietnam in transit, and then 13 hours to London. So. It was a pretty long haul. It was about 36 hours total. When we first started this out, we were thinking, what's the best way to kind of go about it? Like, well, should we just go straight to the, like, the venue or should we come here first and try and like, find a place to either boot camp in an apartment or boot camp in a net cafe? So the most workable solution ended up to come to a net cafe. So we're here in Reading at the moment at Quantum Web Cafe. Pretty much our plans at the moment are we're here from Monday to Wednesday, well, Sunday to Wednesday. We're going to scrim every night, so we've got four scrims lined up against Infused, Broda, and Epsilon. So we're kind of we've aimed for the best, and we're going to see how we do and and kind of kind of gauge how we might perform at LAN. I mean, the Europeans have always been like the the players we don't really know much about. Like I mean, like we watch their games, but it's different in a way. Like they're not as accessible as some of the American games, and like we've really had no idea how to kind of like go about testing the waters against them to see you know, like which play style might be better or, or even just how like individuals like players line up. So we're going to try and use this time to do that as well as like, you know, go over demos, go over strats, do some MGE, all that kind of stuff. The Australian's first night of boot camp practice involves playing versus the ETF2L season 15 runners up TCM. This was the first time Team Immunity had ever faced a European team. Shout out to you, so it's a great, right? Fucking right. I can't, I can't hear you. Stand right there. One close, not right, I think. Why? Well, before. Well, we can hear you. If I can't hear you, I have my headset off. Come on. Stand this. Yeah, man. Side by Still scout back, lads. On the sniper. Yeah, I can't hear you, man. Talk me up, Devin. Talk me up, Devin. For High Rollers Gaming, this is a chance at redemption. I-49 is not their first time competing on the global stage. One year prior, the community held a fundraiser to send two North American teams to Insomnia 46, Leviathan Gaming, and Classic Mixup. The fundraiser met its lofty goal, and I-46 became the first ever intercontinental Team Fortress 2 tournament. The Americans came out in force. Neither team dropped a single map versus the European competition, resulting in an all-American final. Both Mixup and LG walked onto the main stage, with LG's only loss being to Mixup earlier in the bracket. LG put on a show, but were ultimately unable to defeat their long-standing rivals, finishing the tournament in second place. After this defeat, Leviathan Gaming restructured under a new organization, High Rollers Gaming. HRG went on to be undefeated in ESEA Invite Season 13 with a perfect 16-0 record. They then faced Classic Mixup again in the Season 13 LAN Finals. The winner would take not only the first place prize money, but, more importantly, be awarded the community's $10,000 donation to get them to I-49. Shoot some rockets, there's nothing gonna come of this. 24 seconds is all Mixup has left in their LAN life. They need to cap this right now, yeah, or it's, it's over. Yeah, it's 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 make this push or you're done. HRG wins. Mixup has to make this push happen. There's no time. Ten seconds left on the clock for Blue. They are ready. Say, come at us. We're on the point. Har Blue will have his Uber. Big aggressive bomb by Enigma, taking a ton of pressure off. And they're gonna be able to pick up Shade on the backside. Tyler follows up this Roamer's bomb. Pressure on the point, but Red, I believe, is gonna get this. HRG coming in on the left side, get a couple frags, and they're actually back on the point here. They need to get on the point. Does Red, but they're gonna get cleaned oh up. God. Only platinum remains. Is this? 
it? Is this GG? It is! GG goes HRG! Season 13 land champions, a perfect season. Mix up, put up a fight, but in the end, HRG too strong. Congratulations, of course, to HRG, who not only have won um, season 13, but now if the uh, the chip-in fund or the uh, the Kickstarter, whatever that, that thing is called, goes through and we do uh, we are capable of sending a team to I-49, it will be HRG. So they are uh, now officially North America's best team. They've been so all season long, EJC, and they proved it on land, and it's got to feel good for those guys. The donation drive for I-49 is open, and now you guys know exactly who's going. So if you want to see Tag, Lansky, Banny, um, Sizer, Shrugger, Shade, go to England and stomp on the Euros just as hard as they stomped on everybody else last last weekend, um, maybe you should donate. Are your parents cool with sending you off to uh, Yeah, I, well, they, they were really shocked at, like, um, because this is like my first real like win. At first, when I um, you know had like the eleven hundred dollar check, they were like, "Whoa, it's cool." But I'm like, "Oh, well, I also get this this ten thousand dollar sponsorship for my team." And they're like, "Whoa, you know." Yeah. So they, they were. I think they were excited to let me go just because like of the opportunity that like it's all paid for. Medic. So, Shade. Uh, first question: How was the flight over? Um, went pretty smoothly. Uh, the only one that had issues was Paul. Uh, he, Shrugger, and I were on the same uh, aisle, but for some reason he was in the last boarding zone, and we were in, I think, the third boarding zone. So Paul was one of the last ones to board the plane for no apparent reason. Uh, the second uh, awesome thing about our trip was that the stewardess on our plane asked Paul for an autograph, because he looks like Kumar from Harold and Kumar. <laughs> Okay, so you guys have been here since Wednesday. How's the land gone for you so far? Um, just the first few days we were adjusting. Uh, we just stayed at the uni pretty much, I think, all of Wednesday. We did the early access yesterday, so we got to set up and everything. But we haven't really got to scrim. We scrimmed once. Uh, we scrimmed today against uh, the French team. Other than that, we've just been, I guess, getting accustomed to the time change pretty much. So speaking of uh, scrimming against these European teams, what do you think they've learned from last year? Because last year, you guys thrashed their best teams. Um, maybe they learned from our aggressive play style. I know if they watched ESCA land, they probably would have backpedaled a little bit. That's not the best thing to watch. Um, but yeah, I, I think they, maybe they learned how to be a little bit more aggressive. So talking about that ESCA land, that's, that's for those of you who don't know out there, is the, the biggest North America tournament a uh, big prize spot for that one, actually, I think, as far as TF2 goes. Um, you guys just won that, and that was last weekend, so now you're out playing TF2 again on your next weekend. Um, how did that go for you? Yeah, I mean, we still took first. Um, personally, I thought we would take first. It was a little shaky when the Quick Fix update came out. Uh, we took a little bit of time getting adjusted to it. Um, Mix-up was looking extremely strong when it first came out. But uh, yeah, we ended up taking that win uh, last weekend at, for the ESCA. So coming off of that, I think we're feeling pretty confident here too, so. Excellent, okay. What's the difference between the LG of yesterday and the HRG of today? Uh, I think the biggest difference is our soldiers. Um, especially from a DM standpoint, Tag and Lansky from Mackie and Tyrone, it's a DM standpoint, definitely an upgrade, so. And I think as a team, we are playing a lot, a lot better nowadays than we were then. We're, we're just a better team. We have a lot more cohesion now. Epsilon were supposed to win. They were the best team in Europe, ETF2L champions. Nobody predicted that they wouldn't even make it to the final stage at Insomnia 46. Maybe they got complacent. Maybe they underestimated the Americans. Maybe they didn't want it badly enough. Whatever the reason, I-46 was a wake-up call. They were not the best team in the world. For Epsilon, this was unacceptable. Immediately following I-46, Epsilon reformed. Team Captain Knox moved from pocket soldier to medic and brought in the best that Europe had to offer at every position. Okay, uh, I'm Jean-Louis Boyer. My uh, nickname is Knox. I play with Epsilon team since uh, two years. What happened? We lost, we finished third, 
uh, we didn't do our best at this land. Uh, people were not really motivated and feel that they didn't feel that we could win the land. I was really mad about uh, losing was because I was not on a stage. The goal was not to really win, but be on a stage, and we didn't play out our best, so I was really angry about that. Yeah. So yeah, I would leave uh, one year, but I tried to. I saw a lot of team not folding, so I said, "Oh no, I can't leave." And I really want to win a, a LAN, uh, my last, uh, a good LAN. I want to be first champion of the world. That's my. That was my goal. So I said, "Let's try to find the best player in Europe, make a super team, like mix up." I say to everyone, okay guys, it's one year, I just want to build a team from one year to go for I-49, so we're going to play hard, we're going to try hard <laughs> and be the best, and uh, uh, so yeah, that was the goal. Insomnia 46 was the last time that Epsilon lost a match. In the 12 months since, they have been undefeated, taking three straight ETF2L championships. They appear to be unstoppable. This time, Epsilon are ready. Yeah, the invite group was a good idea. People suggested it last time, but we couldn't think of a way to work it in Clanforge, which is our tournament system. It's a bit difficult. So the invite group this time was a, a top eight of all the best teams. So you've got, uh, obviously, the Frenchies, High Rollers, Immunity, Broda, um, or TCM as they're called, Infused, and Epsilon. We had a bit of a struggle trying to choose kind of the bottom enders because they all could beat each other, we weren't sure. In the end, we went for um, Did I Stutter and LMV at the bottom. So you got the eight teams there and uh, essentially, yeah, they all play each other once. They all get a game against each other. That's what they're here for. They're here, they're here to play amazing games against each other. Um, and none of the grumbles was, hey, we didn't get to play this team, we didn't get to play that team. So here you've got your invite group. Everyone plays each other once. You know who's the best seed, who's the worst seed and you then go into the knockout brackets. Then you've got the uh, other four groups of just random scrubs. The top two in those four groups will join them in the, uh, the upper brackets. So you've got eight and eight, 16, double of them, all the way to the final. On va voir euh, du côté des Uber, elles sont prêtes au euh, niveau français, mais on sait qu'on n'a pas spécialement l'avantage. Continue à temporiser, on va continuer à regarder les snipers, de toute façon il n'y a pas grand chose à glander pour le moment. Le sniper qui se Incroyable action de Fifi, c'était complètement hallucinant Keep an eye on Jukebox, he will uh, be trying to equalize that Uber disadvantage and land a stab in. So let's see whereabouts he is going to be going. He's oh! oh! gets the stab. Over to Lux, pistols down gear as well. Can he get the demo? No, he can't. Jukebox is the one who makes things happen. 
Nox is in a bit of trouble there. 55 health. Scout chasing goes for the Ubersaur again. He did manage to land a crossbow, giving him a little bit of health. But there is still a scout with the point. Yes, another crossbow. <laughs> Nox takes him down and survives. Parce qu'on a, on a fait tomber Tsunas, on a fait tomber Tsunas en face Et du coup on va y aller avec le beurre avec un seul scout C'est un petit peu osé mais le scout qui en pas cher Fibi sur euh, Hit qui enchaîne directement sur samedi Le triple flash de Fibi sur euh, samedi et sur Davis ensuite Samedi, euh, Fibi j'aime super cher encore une fois Et le sauteur sur le top qui gêne euh, là en retraite plus oh, 4 frags de Fibi avec cette beurre 4 frags des français qui sont on fire Stop sheep when he's going huge. I don't think they know how far. Oh, oh, oh it again. Is destroyed and oh, oh, it's gonna be enough for one final rocket got knocked. What a shot! It was just out of nowhere. Sorry, that rocket was crazy good. It was such long range. One both times. Soldier comes bombing in. Denied by Pernzilla yet again. What a what a pound by Pernzilla. Um, going huge. The invite group round robin has completed, and each team has played every other team. Epsilon Esports finished top of the group, undefeated. Team Immunity surprised everyone after their tenuous bootcamp, coming in a close second, winning six games, losing only to Epsilon. The Americans take third seed at 5-2, narrowly dropping their matches against Epsilon and Immunity. TCM finish mid-table with a respectable 4-3 record, but will need to step up their game if they wish to make it deep into the knockout bracket. The group stages are fantastic. I mean, the, the group stages last year, it was like, we're, we're going to make sure we give everybody a seed, so they put one top team in each group. This year, they said, no, we're going to have an invite group. So starting on Friday, the action was just nonstop, and the casts were, were fantastic. The matches were awesome. This is probably the biggest and best event that I've ever been to, just because um, I think the Europeans really fixed their mistake of, of not taking it as seriously as they did last time at I-46. So um, every team here is amazingly good. I am uh, surprised everybody. Obviously, Epsilon has been playing extremely well. Um, so all the other Euro teams. So all the other teams are, are really, really high level. And um, you see teams taking games off each other left and right. So it's going to go either way. We just finished all the group stages. We're on the we're 8-0 at the moment. 
Um, we just finished um, against HRG. We won 3-2 on Granary. Um, played in Fuse before that, 4-3 on Process. Um, and those are our games today. We had four games yesterday, which we all won as well. So, yeah. Hardest game so far was? Um, I don't know. It's a toss-up between HRG and, um, surprisingly, Infused. Um, Infused went to Golden Cap on Process. Um, and the HRG won, I think it was about 3-2 for eight minutes with a big stalemate on Yard for a long time. Uh, the group stages for I-49 were really nice. Um, they were essentially kind of just like forced scrims that we could play um, because you, there were no penalties for losing. Essentially, you weren't knocked out. So it was really good for us because we got a lot of practice in. The really good games, I feel, were uh, our first game against TCM or Broda, as you like to call them, um, HRG, and to a lesser extent, I guess, our Epsilon game. Uh, the Epsilon game was actually, I feel, closer than the score indicated. There were a lot of situations where we could have you know, pushed out and potentially capped, but we just didn't capitalize on an advantage properly, and they just punished us for making a slight mistake. Um, but yeah, the HRG game was down to the wire. I think we got like a back cap in the last minute and that was intense. And the, the TCM game was no different. That was just crazy. All, all the games were a lot of fun to play though. Yeah, once we got everything going in terms of the actual competition is by far the best we've ever been to. At least like, well, I, I speak for both no, of us, I agree. I'd I'm agree. sure you no, agree. You know, I agree. It's been the closest we've ever seen uh, compared to the days of Epsilon rolling everyone. Mm. So I look at Mike. Even then, back then, it, TCM rolling everyone. It yeah, nuts. it's always been some, like one team that's always been, they're going to win it hands down. But this year, especially with uh, IM, mm -hmm. HRG, as well as Epsilon, it's going to be a really interesting last uh, sort of 12 hours of tournament play or 24 hours of tournament play that uh, decides who's going to take away the 2,500 pounds. Along with sides are going down, they are going to have to drop back here. The difference was their cell. It's plain and simple. It's oh, what a shot by Banny. I hope that was on the camera. Banny had a pipe already in the air prepared for him. Uh, nothing Yuki could really do about that. Quite a shot. Does get juggled and taken down as the rest of the team are also coming in and capturing the point. Stark running um, sniper ox. Indeed, indeed. So Stark, Stark, is he going to get taken down here? Oh, 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 oh. Headshot from Stark over onto Peter.
disgrace to uniform, pal. there and keep that uber building but epsilon already got that crits creek up and running they're going to be pushing all the way through to last see if they can uh, catch their combo out before they get that uber charge combo is sitting up top might find there's some sort of oh! They are coming through, I see. I wonder if it's been called. They should have probably stopped the middle here. Oh, Jukebox gets the medic! The sight lines are being covered here. Jukebox is wreaking havoc. Players down for HRG, only Strugger and Tag, and uh, Epsilon is probably going to take the first point. Oh, oh. Great play from Tag there. Great play, you also managed to get Nom Nom down at the same time, that's incredible play. Epsilon, TCM, HRG, and Immunity all make it through to the quarterfinals in the upper bracket as expected. Epsilon knock their European rivals down to the lower bracket in two straight maps, whilst HRG managed to nudge out a 2-1 victory over the Australians. At the end of day two, there are only four teams remaining. Epsilon Esports have booked themselves a spot in the grand final by beating the Americans in the upper bracket. HRG are knocked down to the lower bracket final, where they await the outcome of the best of three series between TCM and Team Immunity. Positioning is slightly better of Sheeps, but then again, Sheep takes down Zerba's side. Just listen to me now, Jukebox pit. Oh, he gets hired by Sheep. I think he listened to us there, Scully, and just took out Jukebox. And the crits are in, but they are three down. I don't think the crits is going to do anything here, and TCM need to get out. The first map of the series is CP Process. TCM narrowly squeeze out a 4-3 victory. It's, it's still a die for Team Immunity right now, and they've come all this way. The next 30 minutes definitely decide their fate. On the second map, CP Granary, Immunity starts strong by going up four rounds, putting them at match point. 
community is getting crazy right now. And, and the crowd, once again, I gotta say, is going wild for these Australians. TCM dig deep, stunning the Australians with their coordinated aggression. TCM to make it 4 2, and it looks like you said the momentum is definitely with TCM now. Australia are crumbling. Australia are actually crumbling. What has happened? TCM clawing back four rounds in under five minutes. With the score tied up, TCM pushed for the win. Sticky's over this, let's see what the scout does. The Uber has been parked, it's a multi-Uber. That is a very hefty multi-Uber. That might be costly, I'm not sure. The SG is still up, causing some havoc. Rip goes down, G-Boss goes down, Bimba takes down Yuki though. Bimba goes down, the SG is still up. There is a difference, the scout needs to stay alive. Oh, it's up to Android Sheep, it doesn't look promising. The SG goes down, it's on to Sheep. Oh, TCA wins the comeback. Oh my God, it's five four, that is five straight rounds to TCM. After eliminating Team Immunity from the tournament, TCM carry their momentum into the consolation final against HRG. The winner of this best of three series will play in the grand final versus Epsilon. HRG take the first map on Viaduct, the only King of the Hill map played at I-49. TCM respond with a win on CP Gullywash. It all comes down to this, the final set on CP Badlands. Bracket finals, whoever wins this one goes on to face Epsilon in the grand final on the grand stage. Let's let's give some credit now to Jukebox, uh, probably the best sniper at this point we've all seen. Oh! And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. We might end up with a bit of a stalemate here, as um, HRG, are they gonna commit through this choke? Soldier is making their way wow. forward, Jukebox goes down, sniper threat is eliminated, their medic might be safe for now, Bibbon and Sides are also going down here. TCM falling apart, only Cookie and Merlin live. Merlin's not got great health, but has managed to escape with his scout. Boston Basham building immediately as HRG looking to push forward. Seven seconds on the respawns, they're gonna... I don't think they're gonna be up in time. I think Manny's sticking it off, that scout needs to stay alive. Medic might have to come down and get a hero Uber saw here. Or something tries to go in, but it's not gonna be enough. Vanny coming in, getting the kills, and 2-2 is the score of this lobby, and they're gonna be making a push in. Yep, here is the Pyro right now, trying to buy time for Risk of Seed. Doing a fantastic job of it is Shrugger, actually. Uh, the Heavy is still up, got a lot of HP left. Uh, one or two more Rockets or Pills will take it out. Oh. It doesn't matter. We've got people walking onto the point, and it's 3-2. to two. The Europeans, really, really keen is the word, I guess, to get over onto that grand stage. Much they have. They are looking to come through. They've got to keep uh, their Soldier alive. As actually, as Crits comes in, they've got Crits scout. Can he get the meat shots in onto the Soldier? No, great play from Wow. Kukot. Shuts down that vision. Crits coming through a choke, it is difficult in time, so the next best thing, get a crit screen up, and actually if they get it in time, now they might just be able to walk around the corner, no, we was popped at exactly the same time, but that crit still could deal a lot of damage, Lancy goes down, crit heavy coming in, scout finishes him off, TCM, all over HRG at the moment, Manny's still alive, so, uh, Demoman does come down to uh, try and defend them off here, so just in on the point, he can't wow. step outside on his own, making it beyond HRG, 40 the score at TCM with one foot in the final. Wow, crazy stuff. Well, I don't think anybody was quite expecting there to be two European teams in the finals given the games that we've seen so far, but with Immunity out and HRG desperate to win two rounds in a row in one minute and 30 seconds, I think that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna be Broder versus Epsilon all over again. So European The finalists have been determined. Epsilon will face off against TCM on the grand finals stage. As the dust settles, the gravity of defeat weighs down on Team Immunity and High Rollers Gaming. Their community-funded tournament runs have come to a premature end. Our HRG, uh, has, they are really not uh, as impressive than they were last year with uh, LG and uh, Mixup. So yeah, a bit sad for, for the Americans. I mean, honestly, it, it, we lost just to a few careless mistakes. Um, on Gully Wash, we, we just were getting destroyed by the sniper and meant that they, that they kept running. Um, our team is honestly just, our team is just weak against snipers. And on Batlands, we died to like three sticky traps at Choke. And um, we had no idea where the sticky traps were and it cost us the game. 
the team, um, the team wants to improve. We, we do notice a lot of, we've been noticing them throughout the entire season, our weaknesses, and we are, we're always looking for new ways to improve. And uh, we're def we are actually already talking about ways that we can improve. We're definitely going to get used to the, the fast-paced play style. I, I, was, I was just telling him, Shady, are you going to let this stand? You, you, you got you to prove yourself. You got to stay. He's got too much work to do. Australia have given up. They're already standing up. 4-0 up. That hurts. I... What a way to go out. What a way to go out. I saw the team immunity members walking out, and they looked dejected, and I was like, oh, did you guys get knocked out? And they said, yeah, six rounds and three minutes, or whatever it was, it was disgusting. They, they were really upset about it. as well. I thought they'd be playing a bit better this tournament. I'm hoping they're not letting the games get to them because they are a solid team. This tournament was just that close that any of these teams could have won it on their day. For Epsilon, yeah. They were really focused uh, on what they were doing for the Lance. They played really well the whole season, and that doesn't really amaze me to see them in the final. And actually, I think they really deserve it, of because of all the work they, they put in, everything they, they did for for becoming the most like destructive team in, in the world. And yeah, so they dis, dis, yeah they deserve it. I don't have anything to say. Epsilon Esports and Team Cooler Master take the stage to go head-to-head -head in a best-of-three grand final. With a thousand people watching live at the event and thousands more watching on Twitch, the room is bristling with energy. prepare their setups for the first map, CP Gully Wash, a map notorious for gritty defenses and flamboyant off-classing. Epsilon show their dominance early with a quick round, led by Numlocked and his devastating pipe aim. Despite TCM pushing Epsilon to their last point, they are unable to capture it. With this failed push from TCM, Epsilon capitalize and surge forward, making it 2-0 with a coast-to-coast -coast push. So now we find the TCM stuck on their last. Here they come, Uber's been popped. Bivin taking care straight away. Heavy absolutely destroyed. Jukebox going to switch off the soldier. He's going to get it back in time. Oh. Oh. When Jukebox does get back in time, he's coming to block. Trying to get taken out there. The fourth kill from Knuckles. 2-0 the score. Out of their last, they managed to just carry that momentum all the way to TCM's last. Jukebox and Zebesai, TCM's soldier duo, make some fantastic picks onto Epsilon's Medic Nox. The advantage isn't enough to convert into a round win. The teams duke it out for the next 18 minutes until Epsilon break the deadlock, with Mike sneaking under the point and taking down two of TCM's players to cap out the round and make it 3-0. 
that point back, then retreating all the way to us. One scout is running for it. He is quite weak. The rest of the teams are also coming in, so they have to be very, very wary of that. And let's have a look if they can do this. Soldier on the back of the point. He's just touched it now. He takes down one player. That's Mike takes down the second. Burning. Oh my gosh, Mike coming in. Finishing that cap off. 3 0 is the score to Epsilon with 4 minutes 20 seconds remaining. TCM need a miracle. Epsilon has carried their form from the tournament stages into the grand final, with Numlock picking up MVP for the first map, hitting a monolithic 13,000 damage and 33 frags. Still on I don't know. <laughs> TCM are determined to not be taken down in two maps. With a more aggressive stance on CP Badlands, TCM proved that they deserve to be on the final stage and go up 3-0 in less than five minutes. Oh. Two bots on to Dunlock, jumping in behind. Knox might be in trouble here. Knox jumping around, going for the boat. Does kill two bots, is not winning it. And but it does fall out. Jukebox, renowned for his off-classing ability, shows exactly why he should be feared. He switches to Sniper, causing havoc in the ranks of Epsilon. Soldiers had to jump out of the corner, but there's other plays there. Can the scouts uh, deal damage to him? Oh, Mike wow. goes down. Jukebox getting that kill. Epsilon quite over extended a few of their players. Jukebox still able to stay oh. contact. Can oh. Oh. Get the shot over us and dodge. This kid must be cheating. Epsilon are rattled by the uncontrollable aggression of TCM and drop another round to make it 4-0. Oh, oh, but all back out on the point! Bibbon sneaks in through the action of Zolta, could not get back in time. 4-0 at TCM. Epsilon are regarded as the best team in Europe for a reason and gather themselves to fight back from the clutches of defeat. A strong push on the TCM's last gets them on the scoreboard, boosting their confidence and leading to a quick back cap by the German scout Bash in the next round. TCM reply with Jukebox and their medic Mirrorland, clearing up Epsilon's tattered defenses to extend their lead once again. The crowd align themselves behind the underdogs, boosting their morale. TCM put on a valiant defense as Mirrorland goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Epsilon's medic Nox. Mirrorland drops Nox with a Zubersaw, causing the crowd to erupt with a deafening roar. Thanks to Mirrorland's brave play, TCM now have a massive advantage and attempt to push. It backfires as Epsilon's spawn wave come in and take the round, further closing the gap. Here they come! Well, that's it, they're in the, they're in the point! In the point now, Epsilon have the numbers, have they got the damage? Two plays to life, it looks like Epsilon might be able to draw a round back in. But with only two minutes on the clock, it's still looking bleak for Epsilon. TCM build a sentry on their last point, but Epsilon destroy it instantly, regrouping and pushing again to cap out the round. Epsilon, determined not to lose their first map of the tournament, surge forward, annihilating TCM, bringing the score to a tie at five points each, forcing the match into golden cap overtime. The teams have a brief moment to compose themselves before the round starts. Both teams reach mid, neither one wanting to make the first move. Suddenly, TCM coordinate and execute a precise bomb of their soldiers and demo man, wiping Epsilon. With a full uber charge advantage, they push fast to Epsilon's last. A frantic fight ensues. The longer they wait, the more chance of the mistake coming out. Uh, a spike. And, and in, 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 straight away. And comes the Uber Both now. Both scouts come a point. Cookie there as well. Sticky's oh. there. He's taking the hit. Maybe Cookie do it already. He's over. He doesn't. Number two is delayed. Zebensai coming in to help out as well. Oh. That's going to be so The deciding map in the series is CP Granary. Epsilon bounce back from their defeat on Badlands and go up three rounds early thanks to a world-class performance from their soldier pair, Mike and Gear. Bash wins it there, but uh, it was two on one technically. Bash proving all my uh, free game chat wrong there as he comes in and crushes the scout combos. As uh, Epsilon do manage to hold on to this midpoint. 
CM will not contest it, but Grime might be in trouble here. Grime is caught, and Mike's still walking forward. Uber has been popped as they can. Someone needs to take care of Mike. Oh. Rip, oh, Mike takes down Marilyn, so disaster for TCM. They're going to be finding it hard to hold on here. With nothing to lose, TCM go on the offensive and take the middle point, opening the door for an easy capture of Epsilon second. Epsilon parked the bus on last, withstanding three of TCM's attempts to cap. TCM are losing time fast, and Jukebox makes his move, bombing in to get the crucial pick onto Nox. With their Uber now fully charged, TCM are able to finally get a point on the board. Dr. Uber sword as well, it's gonna be so close, and finally TCM do get a point on this third and final match. Epsilon need to stem the bleeding and come out in force on the next mid. Mike and Gear claim a combined five kills with a synchronized bomb and perfectly timed rockets. Noplock there uh, might have allowed Jukebox him to get a bit faster than Diversify gets in. Yes, Noplock knocks also falls down, but TCM losing a lot of their damage dealing classes. It's going to be down to Bibbit and Diversify to see what they can do here. Can they do enough? Uh, Zero does have a nice high bunch, but two soldiers oh. jumping him around. He's up on the crate to fight, oh. taking down both of them with a faster class of soldiering. Epsilon keep rolling to TCM's last and secure the round, making it 4-1. At this point, TCM are fighting the clock, and Epsilon aren't the type of team that makes mistakes. TCM battle furiously and capture another round, bringing the match within two points. The timer ticks away as it becomes evident that hope is lost for TCM. Epsilon push one last time and secure the point, putting it without doubt. They had just become world champions. Team Immunity were the wild card in this tournament. Nobody knew how they would stack up, but they have proven that they deserve a place on the global stage. Before returning home, they are already discussing plans for Insomnia 52. HRG came to I-49 expecting a repeat of last year. They are disappointed with their third place finish. Even if they have not lived up to their own standards, they still put on some of the most memorable matches that the world has ever seen. TCM, against all odds, finish in second place. They too have toppled the best that both North America and Australia have to offer. Their exhilarating and unpredictable performance will be remembered long after I-49. Epsilon Esports are crowned world champions, their hard work in the year since I-46 finally culminating in this moment. They have gone undefeated throughout the entire tournament, dropping only a single map in the final. I-49 played host to the most compelling, closely fought TF2 the world has ever seen. With immense support from the community, the world's top teams were able to put on unforgettable performances, adding another chapter to the storied history of competitive Team Fortress 2, and proving once again, if only for a moment, that we have our place on the global esports stage. Even if we have to fight for it with everything we have, even if we fund it ourselves, we will make it happen. We will put on a good show. I think I-49 will be the best tournament. I'm gonna to go out on a high. The TF2 tournament, I don't think you can get much better. You know, I don't think we'll ever get the Australians and the Americans together again. Um, there's not really anyone else that you'd wanna to come to a land that would be good enough to play at this competition. So it's literally the best TF2's ever gonna see, I think.
I reckon this is going to be the pinnacle of tier two. What is it about TF2 that keeps you playing? Well, TF2 is a lot of fun. I think I think that has to be the reason that I play. I mean, you'd give it up if it wasn't. I mean, I'm lucky. Like I've been playing with the same people for four years, so we all really know each other quite well. I mean, I think that's really for me what's kept me playing. One, I really like the game, but two, because I've kind of developed so many friendships playing the game, and, and even like just close like close knit ties with my own team. Like when it stops being fun, you can sit down and talk about it and be like, look, what do we need to change for this to, to keep being fun? Oz Fortress community, Team Fortress TV community, Euros, everyone, just amazing. Like, it's incredible. Like, we raised $6,700 off them, and we saw about 6,200 of that, so that definitely helped us out. Like, I mean, our flights are, like, our flights are alone were, like, $9,500. So, like, I mean, without that kind of help, there was no way it would have happened. Shout out to HRG, High Rollers Gaming, for uh, helping get us here. Shout out to all, everyone that donated for, uh, for our donation drive that helped us also get us here and to ESEA. Um, shout out to all of the community for you know putting up the money to help get us where we are right now. The whole venue, everything's been nice. It's been a great host. Um, shout out to Cube and Bones for this awesome movie that you guys are watching. <laughs> and um, yeah, shout out, shout, shout out to everyone. Shout out to everyone. Well, it's my last LAN, so uh, yeah, shout out to everyone I've ever met in TF2, uh, the LAN tournaments, because it's been a fun time. You just go for a weekend, get drunk, play some computer games, uh, get messed up, and uh, yeah, it's been good fun. We'd like to say a few shout outs and thanks to Multiplayer, obviously, with the amazing mini booth, and Carney, obviously, helping us out. Bluey with his amazing plugin. TF.TV for all their exposure as well. And a big thanks from all of the, the, the Villain TV staff to Lang and Sal. Lang's been an absolute one-man demolition unit, literally, with the production. He's done so well. Yeah, he's the best as you get, really. So uh, well done to Lang. And Sal, obviously, coming all the way from America and doing some quality casts uh, all the way up to the Constellation final. Major props to him. Obviously, the teams. Without the teams, we wouldn't have any content to show you. A big thanks to HRG Team Immunity, especially Team Immunity, coming all the way from Australia. Epsilon, TCM, Infused, uh, the Frenchies, uh, LMV, Solar, and all the other teams that contributed, even if they weren't in the top eight. The numbers make up the prize money, so obviously a big thanks to you. Showing your support into the community and showing up for the final. We almost had a sellout seat to final with a thousand seats to be filled. And lastly, but not least, the VTV crew. I'll just say a, ma a massive thanks to all the Vinyl TV staff here. They've done a fantastic job.
up to? Uh, making eggs on naked. How come he had to get naked? Well, actually, he's been thrown in a bush by Plapla. So why did why did Plapla throw eggs on in the bush? Because he said that Plapla was fat. Direct a commentary on the movie. What I was trying to do here is really capture the emotion of a scout in six for six. Man, I didn't say anything about my giant hairy balls earlier. You did not hear any of that, so. 